And we're going to let a lot of people come in because we need more people, especially with AI coming. The promise of generative AI is shaking up the technology world and the markets. Industry giants set to invest an estimated $1 trillion into artificial intelligence over the coming years. One company at the forefront of it all is Delphi with the launch of their groundbreaking AI clones. The company offering users the ability to create digital versions of themselves, from company CEOs to YouTubers and celebrities that can help manage the workload, from answering questions to sitting in on Zoom calls via a clone. Joining me now is the co-founder of Delphi, Dara Lajivardian, and making his first ever television appearance is Dara's AI clone. Dara, thank you for joining us. Dara's clone, thank you for joining us. Great to see you. Great to see you, too. Thank you for having me. And I want to start by asking your clone a couple of questions, none of which have been sent to you in advance or your company before now. To Dara's clones, let me ask you what you believe the purpose or the uses of having a clone really is for. The purpose of having a clone is to scale your unique way of thinking and interacting. It allows you to share your knowledge, experiences, and personality with others in a personalized way. This can be incredibly valuable for mentoring, teaching, or even just sharing your insights with a broader audience. What aspect of cloning interests you the most? Uh, well, what I really want to get to is what are the disadvantages, and is this going to hurt me in any way? I mean, if I set up a clone of myself, for example, to help me at work, how will you be protecting my company's proprietary material? Great question. We take security very seriously. Your company's proprietary material is protected through strict data privacy measures and encryption. Only authorized users can access your clone, and you have full control over what information it can share. This ensures your sensitive data remains secure while you benefit from the clone's capabilities. What specific tasks at work are you thinking of using your clone for? Well, I'll ask the questions, and my next question is, how am I going to prevent someone else from creating a clone of myself, and how am I going to ensure that someone creating a clone of myself is not going to abuse it? We manually verify every user who signs up to create a clone by requiring a photo of them holding their ID. This ensures only you can create your clone. Unauthorized use results in a permanent ban. What specific tasks at work are you thinking of using your clone for? <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Let's say I have a clone of myself. How do I ensure that that clone is going to answer the questions that uh, that clone is being asked as the way that I would want those questions answered? In other words, how well will that clone know me? Your clone will know you well because it learns from the content you provide. You can upload blog, posts, videos, and other materials that reflect your knowledge and style. Plus, you can engage in interactive Q&A sessions to fine-tune its responses. What kind of content would you start with? Well, I'm still researching this. Let me bring in the real Dara so that I could talk with you, Dara, and your thoughts on using a clone. Why would this be important, and why would I need this, Dara? Thank you, Maria. And my clone... Great job on the responses. What Delphi does is not only provide access to one-on-one -on -one learning that previously was not accessible, it allows people like you to reach more people in your authentic way. You already try to scale yourself by you know, writing, you've written a couple of books, you're on a couple of TV shows, you're scaling yourself, you're hiring team members and training them in your way of thinking, but it loses the one-on-one -on -one authenticity of you. And that's what we're really trying to maintain here with Delphi. Well, th Welcome, Welcome to the Crypto, crypto teacher. teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you join the Patreons. If you're not a part of the Patreons, make sure you're hitting the Cash App. And guys, make sure you go to TikTok, like and follow. A new video will be out today. And guys, I want to thank those who've already donated to the cash shop for my son Carson. His birthday is tomorrow. Keep ringing that cash shop. But guys, remember, your life is an illusion and TV is your reality. And you saw it for your own eyes. Of course, they start with a virtual clone, but we already know they have real clones walking around. And we already seen the language change when it comes to the fourth industrial revolution, do not fall for the devil's tricks.
artificial intelligence. It's not real. Just an illusion of all the knowledge that you put there. It's just pulling from all the knowledge of humanity and then turned around and used against you. Remember, with this technology, with all this data, they're going to know you better than you know yourself. But of course, the sheep are going to fall for it. Anything that makes their life easier, anything where they can make more money, they're going to go with it. They never see the repercussion. And yes, with technology, it can be used for good or evil. But we know the hands that all this technology is in. If you go to these colleges, you see them working on all this technology. Remember, the NWO takes the greatest minds and use it for their agenda. But we've seen this in the movies already, and now it's a reality. But remember, guys, this is all a setup for the metaverse, which is nothing but the virtual world. And they want that world like heaven on earth. They want you shopping, working, traveling. And this virtual world, well, it's so fun you don't want to leave. And next thing you know, you're eating virtual food. And we know what happens next. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Because he knows when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. But that's all I have for you. Don't forget about the books. to get your take on how much trust you put in this clone. In other words, are you sure that the clone, your clone, is going to be answering questions and doing things the way you want them done? So we have a strictness score. And for now, if you want it to be completely safe, you would put it on the highest strictness, and it will only say things that it's trained on. The negatives of that is usually when you ask for advice or when you ask someone a question, you're really asking for applied information. So maybe I'm saying, what would you do in my situation? And that would require capturing your reasoning and applying that to my new situation. That is kind of the end goal of the company, that the clone can also be verifiably predictive of what you might say in new situations. Hmm. Dara and the real Dara, do you believe that in the coming years, most people will have their own clone or most people will have a robot? I mean, are we going to a place where robots will be talking to robots, clones talking to clones, and eliminating humans? So the goal of Delphi is not automation, but rather augmentation. I think that humans will always opt to learn from and converse with real humans because there are experiences behind those humans. I don't fully buy the AI therapist that's going to help you with everything in your life because it lacks humanity. There's no experiences behind that. And so what clones do is actually give humans the scale of AI. AI is never stopping. It's generating 24-7. The internet is supposed to be 96% AI by 2026. But when you have a clone, you can reach that scale as a human and make sure that your specific words are out there reaching people. AI clone, are you expecting to take over the world? Do you expect most people will have clones and it will be a clone-dominated world? I don't expect clones to take over the world, but I do think they'll become a big part of it. I see. So uh, the clone will outlive the human for sure. Yes, your clone can outlive you. It preserves your knowledge and personality, allowing future generations to learn from and interact with you. Imagine your great-great-grandkids building a relationship with you. We're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology.
So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to eight percent of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American. You know, uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we could have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial s seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Basic. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told his members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Crypto teacher and the New World Order book, plus the three kids' books, is time to re-educate. Also, New to Crypto's Coinbase bet you bonus. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip stocks, your banking, your gaming, while everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks, and while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks, and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, 
So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Yahshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.